And here we are looking at a local library at the junction of Main Road and School Lane. And as you can see, things are moving quite quickly because we're using Open Camera Android app and we're looking at some stop motion, hyperlapse, time lapse, call it what you want, which means that this video is all about Open Camera Android app and it is the video speed part. And in yellow here at the bottom, I'm really calling it the video camera shutter speed control setting. If you're making any kind of video that gives you an incredible responsibility because you can speed up and slow down time and the closest I could get to it was the wonderful chess timers where we can literally stop clocks and start clocks. Let's have a look at some ducks over the river and some cars going over a bridge and you can see there's lots of things with people going by which leads us to the idea of how open camera itself which you can see on Google Play here, has a tremendous amount of things going on with it. And for those of us who are new to Open Camera, top left is the cog where you can access the speed control. Notice big red arrow, we're in the video mode. So when you start it up and open settings, top right here, speed is normal. And I'm just going to walk you through. We can go up and click the right arrow. We can double the speed. You can see it's now times by 10 and that clicks through up to speed 120 times and also 240 times the speed, which I think is a little bit difficult to understand for me, certainly, and I'll explain why. If you look in the open camera help, it says speed. This allows you to record video at either a faster rate, time lapse, or a slower rate, slow motion. I don't have access to the slow motion part because I don't have camera API 2. But let me explain what I mean by speed up and slow down because it's ever so um, tricky to understand. So if you post video edit with something like PowerDirector, you have a speed of an eighth to one to times eight. What that actually means in terms of speeding up and slowing down your video and also in um, open camera itself is if you will, imagine that you're in a car and 25, whether it's kilometers or miles per hour, is your normal. And that's why it's there in the center look, normal. You could slow down to an eighth of that speed and go at three miles an hour, say, three kilometers an hour. You can understand that. I can understand that. But if you can imagine going at 25 as your normal and then speeding it up to times by eight and suddenly you're traveling at 200 miles or 200 kilometers an hour, you will understand that that is really, really quick and can actually get out of control. So what do we mean by that? Well, have a look at this graph here or chart rather. And what I've done on the left hand side to explain is the speed in open camera is normal times by two, three, four, five, ten, all the way up to 240. And what this means in practice for certainly people who are new to this idea is that normal speed means that you are taking a picture, a frame every 0 0.03 seconds, which means it's 30 frames a second. You might be familiar with that. You've heard of it before. What your camera is actually doing, your video camera, your mobile phone, call it what you want, is actually going along and recording 1800 pictures. And that is taking a minute to do it. So in other words, you set the thing off, it goes 30 frames a second k -k 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 -k, for 60 seconds. And you have literally spent 60 seconds a minute to do it because that is real on the top line, real time. Notice the chart is actually going through to say what happens when you only take, and I will highlight one at the bottom here because it gets pretty complicated, is that when you go into say normal, top line is what you're doing. If you put the speed to times by 60, instead of recording 30 frames every second, what you're actually doing is recording half a frame per second. So in other words, you're recording one frame every two seconds. What this actually means that you're only recording 30 frames um, in one minute. And also the time to record this minute has now gone up to one hour, not your normal one minute. I know this is incredibly confusing, but think about what you are actually doing. Because, and this is the, the big payoff here, and I will demonstrate and you know put an example to this. So what I'm getting at is that 
The normal speed that you can go at means in real time that if you set your camera off for one minute, that's exactly what you record. That is common sense and reasonable. If you go and set the camera to, let's say, 120 speed, what that actually means, it's taking one frame every four seconds which means the frames per minute to build up your stop motion is 15 and so to actually record one minute of usable footage that's 120 minutes or two hours. Can you see where we're going here? So although you're setting the thing to say right it's times 120 isn't that great to actually get one minute of usable footage i.e. the clouds moving or traffic or people or whatever you have to put your camera on a tripod and sit there for two hours. Can you see how this gets a bit difficult um, to understand in terms of time? I set a times by 10 earlier with the one about the cars going over a bridge and I literally recorded 10 minutes knowing that I um, wouldn't have that many seconds at the end of it when I finished. Look, going on to this slide, if we have um, some extracted frames, 30 frames a second looks like this. Here is the, the Broomfield one again and we've got 30 pictures all sped up in a video that makes it look um, like it's moving and what you've actually got, hence time-lapse, hyperlapse, stop motion. Um, what I'm getting at with open camera is that you can record one frame every 0 0.03 of a second or 8 seconds, one frame every 8 seconds. So in theory, someone could be walking a dog or something, be in frame for 7.5 or 7 three quarter seconds. You never see them because you've got one picture before and one picture after. I think, um, let's have a look at this girl who's walking down the road outside the Broomfield Library. And then after that, I can see that if I put this in practice, when the girl was walking, it looks like with her phone, that she was using, um, or my recording rather, was frames 29 to 41. And I've used literally 12 frames here. And I've only selected five. And I've built this up to see that she is physically one, there, there, and there. There is nothing pretty much in between. Similarly, if you look at this ambulance going along the road, then you can see the um, build up the collage, shall we say, using Microsoft Ice, which I'll come to in a second, and it looks like there's actually a convoy of four ambulances driving down the road, but in fact it's one which has been taken every so often, depending on your setting. Notice the vignette down the side here, that's because I had like a little wide-angle lens clipped over my mobile phone. Um, if you wanted to produce something like this with this um, person or object going down every so often, then I've used Microsoft Ice, which is the image composite editor. So going right back to it again, if you're using this stop motion and 25 is normal, you can speed things up to 200 or you can bring it down to 3.125. I know this is complicated. I know that to get the most out of it, you have to do a lot of thinking. That's why really I've made this video. So when you're sitting there literally with your camera on a tripod and, you know, tripod's best for this. And you can see that in the center, I've just been recorded for just over 10 minutes that the cars are moving. We've got or did have a few ducks on the river here. We had cyclists and dog walkers going down the side. You've really, really got to think about what's going on. So let's have another look at the cars moving over the bridge. Uh, another quick look at the people and the cars outside the library in Broomfield. And let's have a final, final look with one of those other things that I did and fade it to black.